Welcome to the fifth module, and in this module we'll talk about middleware. And in the first lecture we'll define what middleware is. So if you look at the application architecture that we've previously defined, middleware is in fact in the middle of this architecture. It really is the meat of a web application. You'll see from this figure that the model view controller design pattern is implemented as a part of the middleware. Actually it's implemented on top of the middleware. So let's start with a definition. Some people refer to middleware as the glue that holds uh, basically the client and server together. Um, some refer to it as the dash between the client and server and the client server architecture. I like to think of middleware as providing the um, services to applications that are not available from the underlying operating system. And so it really serves to connect the various pieces of a web application architecture that are running on the server side. Thus, what we get from middleware is we get the ability to piece the entire web application architecture together and allow pieces of this architecture to communicate where natively they can't do it. So it provides the, the go-between between these pieces of the web application architecture that you need to communicate, that need to be, communicate with one another. Now I'm not going to dig deeply into the uh, middleware that comes with Rails. We're going to focus, as I said, more on how our model view controller design pattern is implemented on top of it. But it's very important to know that it's there. So in Rails, there's a middleware stack, and it's called Rack, and it's automatically provided for you. So when you um, built the blog application and ran the initial generator to create the blog application, Rails knew, um, it provided a default middleware for you. Now, what Rack does is it provides a very unified and simple interface that allows applications to talk to web servers and then to process those requests and provide a response. And so really, it's, it's ultimately responsible for handling the HTTP requests and response. So everything that happens after your browser makes a request, what happens on the server side and the response, is all implemented over middleware. Rack is organized to um, provide a stack of, of services in the middleware. And this, this stack of services is typically written in Ruby, and it pieces them together so that one level of this stack is able to talk to those um, middleware services that are above and below it. Now, if you'd like to see what middleware is provided for you, just go to your um, console and type rack middleware, and you'll see a listing of all the middleware that comes pre-configured for Ruby on Rails. Now, other Ruby frameworks, for example, Sinatra is another very popular Ruby-based web application framework that doesn't have all of the uh, database backend support. So if you, don't, if you need to build a web application that doesn't require intensive database backend, Sinatra is a good choice for you. It's also built on top of Rack. In this class, we're just going to use this default middleware. Um, and again, my point in discussing this is to make sure that you are aware of what's under the hood. And you should understand that when you execute Rails server and start up the Rails server, a Rack server object is created for you. It's attached to the web server, and then all of the middleware components are loaded up for you. And then this Rack server start method uh, is implemented. And what happens when you implement this uh, start method is that the server starts up, attaches it to your Rails application, and starts listening uh, on, in our case, localhost 3000 port, excuse me, uh, localhost port 3000. So this is what's happening behind the scenes. The web server started up using the middleware, and it's listening for HTTP requests. So this completes the first lecture in Module 5.